Hey there friends, it's Missy again. Thanks for joining me today. I'm back with a new layout for Coco Vanilla Studio. And for this layout, I wanted to do some mixing and matching with different collections. I've got some papers here from Love Always, Wild at Heart, and I believe there's a couple in there from Life is Beautiful. I just wanted to try to do some mixing and matching and try to make some unlikely color schemes possibly work together. And the first paper that I wanted to use is this beautiful floral paper from Love Always. I've been hoarding it for a while. And I love the tropical feel of the pink, coral, and green mixed together. And so I'm going to take some time and do some fussy cutting on this paper from some of these floral clusters. I actually wind up doing a lot of fussy cutting on this whole layout. And so while that takes some time and I enjoy doing it, it's very boring to watch. So I'm going to zoom through a lot of that and save you the pain and agony of watching me twist and turn those scissors. So I cut out three clusters from that paper and now I'm going to cut out some of these really rich pinkish red flowers from Wild at Heart. And this is a beautiful floral paper, but you can see it's completely different color scheme than the other paper. But I'm going to try to make these two colors work together. So I'm going to use this picture of my daughter. I made it black and white just because the colors weren't that great. Um, originally and I like the way that the darks and the lights kind of com com um, I was going to say compare but that's not the word contrast against the bright colors and the soft colors in those flowers so this is another paper from Love Always and I'm going to use this black and white piece here as my title I've been eyeballing it for a while and so I just decided that I'm going to use it on this layout and a lot of times I don't want to incorporate black or dark gray onto my page, but on this layout I'm going to do that. And so that's going to be my title. And I just kind of have it laid out on my desk how I think I might want to have it on the background. I do some more fussy cutting there. And I wind up not using some of that, but I like the way it looked at first and so I just went ahead and cut it out. And I'm going to use this paper from Love Always as my background. And it's got lots of dots. And I'm going to do a technique that I like to do a lot. And that is use white acrylic paint to sort of fade out a lot of the circles. And you're still going to be able to see most of them. But in the area where I'm going to put my picture and flowers, I'm going to kind of white it out. And you can see what I'm talking about there. It's, it's going to give me some solid white space with some subtle dots poking through or peeking through but uh, it's going to really emphasize the flowers and the photo and make it make everything stand out. So I'm just kind of playing around here and just deciding where I want to put what and um, I do wind up changing it around. I actually like the way that looks but I do wind up changing it. And I like how the Wild at Heart flowers look with the Love Always flowers. It just gives it a different color scheme and uh, it brings in more shades of pink, which I love. So now I'm going to jazz up my background here and I'm going to use some different shades of pink shimmers and do my favorite technique that I do all the time. Well, it's not my technique. It is a technique that I love to do. Uh, the packaging technique. I think a lot of people love to do that and I always have good results with it. And so it's probably my number one choice of technique when it comes to adding watercolors or paints to my backgrounds. I think I used three or four different shades of pink here and I just want to emphasize that dark rich pink color that I've got in those wild at heart flowers. And I think it's going to look really nice up against the soft oranges and corals in the other flowers. And I like to start the mixed media and then bring the embellishments and the picture back just to kind of make sure you can still see what I'm doing. Now to add in some more shading here, I'm going to use some gelatos. And I just kind of want to smudge it around with my finger. And I have found that using the white acrylic paint really makes it easy to smudge with your finger. And gesso also too, but gesso is a little bit more gritty. And so uh, you're going to get a different look. This is going to give me a really smooth look. And uh, But either way, either one you use, you're going to get a really uh, easy way to smudge and blend. 
paint, gelatos, any type of thing like that. So I love how this is looking and I really love that pink. This is one of the Cocoa Vanilla cut files. It's uh, available in the store under the Color Me Happy collection and I just cut one on white cardstock to use as a layer behind everything and I like how that looks. So I pulled out some more shimmers and I want to bring in a little bit more of that really soft light orange color and so this color matches perfectly and I just want to have you know more subtle colors and uh, some more lights and to uh, pull out the colors that are in those flowers. I use my finger, I use the brush, a little bit of everything. And you can see here my paper is not really warping. Um, I find that when I cover a lot of it like this with the white paint, it it dries really nicely and I don't have a lot of warping. But cardstock is a little bit different. This paper here worked really, really nicely with it. But I have found that whenever I do have warping and the edges curl up, uh, overnight I will put something really heavy on top of it like some really heavy books or boxes or something and just leave it overnight and then the next day it's pretty flat and that seems to work pretty pretty well for me and this is the greenish teal color that I have in the leaves I just wanted to add some hints of that around the page it's very subtle and soft And when you don't have the exact color that you want, just use some other colors to make it. Just mix and match, and you can pretty much come up with whatever color you want. It's like the background. I started out with the sprays, and then I added the gelatos, and it, you know, it wound up being the perfect color. So if you don't have the exact color, just look around and see how many different things that you have that you can mix together to make the color that you want. So I'm going to start to glue things down and I'm going to come in with some thread. I did have the perfect shade to match that orangey coral color so I'm going to add in a little bit of that to the left and the right side of the picture. And then I'm going to add a little bit down under this bottom cluster as well. And I like how this is turning out. I really like the dotted background. And so to pull from that, uh, I'm going to use this part that I cut out in the beginning as my title. And it's just going to sort of echo the black dots. Well, they're technically not black. They're more of like a really smoky dark gray but uh, it matches the picture because when you have a black and white picture you've got black you've got white you've got gray all different shades and so I think working with gray is pretty and I really wanted to use um, more gray elements and I wanted to use this hello happiness piece but I just could not find the exact spot for it I do use that little rubber charm that says so very beautiful and I just stuck it right on top of the picture there and it's going to overlap that flower a little bit. And I do wind up using that You Make My Heart Smile piece and I believe that's from uh, love always also this is a little label sticker that I had cut for something else and never used that is from the make a wish sticker sheet and it's a really pretty pink color and I just used half of it down at the bottom and the other half behind the picture and then these are little bits and pieces that I cut from the love always paper I couldn't decide where to put that little banner piece, but it's going to go right there. And 
Now, now that flower there was actually a die cut from the Wild at Heart ephemera pack. And I just cut around the edges and cut off the white border so it would match the other pictures. Or the other flowers. Because when you fussy cut them from pattern paper, they don't have that white border. But the die cuts usually do. More fussy cutting couple more flowers because I wanted to jazz up that circle over on the left so I made a little flower cluster there and I tried to pull in all the colors from the other flower clusters so it would coordinate over on that side as well So I tried to, to uh, pull in a little more of the teal or the green color that uh, is in the leaves without making it too much. I did add a little bit of gesso. I thought I had recorded that. I must have forgotten. But I added a little bit of gesso on top of the right side of that circle so I could add in some more watercolor just to sort of overlap it so it doesn't look so separate from the background. I wanted it to look like the background kind of just happened to leak on or not leak I don't know what the word is I'm looking for I wanted it to be a part of the background and not just a separate piece that I just stuck on there and so I wanted to overlap the pink watercolor on top of it I hope that makes sense these are some chipboard hearts from wild at heart and a little piece that says sweet this was fun to mix and match all these bits and pieces together um, the only downside to doing this is you have to pull everything out and your desk is a huge mess because you have three or four collections scattered everywhere. But, you know, it's just how you have to do it sometimes. And my room is a mess 24-7, so I really didn't notice any difference. I really need like a week to clean my scrapbook room up because it stays messy. So off camera, I did a little bit of stitching. I stitched underneath each of those words, a little bit over there to the left, and a little bit of zigzag underneath the word happy. And then I have to add some thread over there to make it even. It's getting close to being done, I think. Yeah, I'm going to add a little bit of journaling. I almost just decided to write it freehand, but then I thought, no, you will totally write it downhill and it will just mess up the whole thing. So when in doubt, draw lines. And my, I'm just using, what kind of pen is that? I know the name of it. Pilot Razor Point. And it works really nicely on top of that. Uh, white acrylic paint. There's the final page. The last thing I did do was add a little bit of Spiegel Mom Scraps sequins on the page in a very pretty teal minty green color to match the, the leaves. And you can see one right there. But I love how this turned out. I, um, I love the color scheme. It was fun to kind of mix and match the flowers from two totally different collections that have completely different color schemes. And just try to make them work. I think tying in the background like that really brings everything together. So it's fun to make your own color scheme. So I hope you guys give this a try. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great week.